Angel fans, the Angels finished first in something you never want to finish first in. What was it? We're going to talk about it, and we're going to tell you the reason why. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you want to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Wednesday to you. And thank you for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, a couple show notes right off the bat. Everybody knows probably already that we're dropping episodes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right up until pitchers catchers spring training around that time then we'll be back to five days a week of course and then i just found out the other day two more weeks to vote for locked on angels for best baseball podcast presented by the baseball pod or sorry the sports podcast awards i got baseball on the brain here (laughs) because we want to be the best baseball podcast if you want to vote for us you can do so by following the link in the episode description whether you're watching or listening just follow that link it really mean a lot to us, whether you've been here a long time or a short time. It really mean a lot to us to uh, get your vote. On today's show, Mike, the Angels finished first in something that you never want to finish first in. What was it? Well, it came from Bleacher Report yeah. and writer Zach Reimer. Mike, why don't you tell us about that? All right, so a lot of fans saw this, every day or saw this, but let's circle back to last week. Bleacher Report posts a graphic, and on the top of the graphic it says, the top 10 least improved teams so far for the the off season for the off season so here's here's the list from 10 to 1 so number 10 is the red sox number nine is mariners number eight the brewers number seven the orioles number six the astros number five the rangers number four the rays number three the twins number two the padres and the number one team the winners of the least improved team this off season are the angels now here's what stood out to me johnny what stood out to me was that Bleacher Report put Artie's face mm. on this graphic. It mm-hmm. is a nice photo of Artie, by the way. But they put Artie's face on this graphic. And I thought it was interesting. And here's why. The Angels organization has taken a lot of blame and a lot of shame for not getting Trout and Otani to the playoffs, right? But it seems like, at least from the national media, that Artie is Teflon when it comes to mm. blame. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily talk about him. They talk about everything around him and all the players that played with Otani and Trout. And they talk about the general manager, but they don't talk about Artie. Now, local media has. And so shout out to Jeff Fletcher and and Sam Blum and Sarah Valenzuela and others. They have done a good job of really reporting on the entire picture of what's happening with the Angels. But national media hasn't. And Johnny, correct me if I'm wrong, but... I think this is the first time that we've seen the national media at least acknowledge that this is an arty problem, right? In in quite some time. Yeah. I mean, and, and the fact that it's not coming from somebody like Sam Blum, who, you know, to be fair, is a national writer because he works for the athletic. Yes. But, but for this to come from Bleacher Report. And the other thing is Mike, I know that the, uh, the author of this article was Zach Reimer, uh, or the, at least the guy who put this list together. Yeah. But shout out to the uh, the uh, graphic designer who put this <laughs> yeah. together and yeah. decided that Artie Marino needs to be the face of this failure. It, it's it's probably a longtime suffering Angel fan <laughs> that put who, the, that yeah, put the graphic together right. to us and went. <laughs> you know what? Those guys are right because yeah. Mike, you're right. His name has not been attached to the failures. In Anaheim. Now, Angel fans know it and they see it and they talk about it all the time. And we know this and we know that this is true. But you and I expressed some frustration a couple of weeks ago when the dialogue became, oh, you got to get Trout off the Angels. This is ridiculous. And it's like, why does everybody want to punish 
this fan base right who has stuck through this team stuck with this team through thick and thin by taking away who now is the best player on the team i think otani certainly took that mantle especially while trout was out and hurt in otani doing everything that he was doing but trout is back to being the sole face of this franchise like he was before otani arrived right. and i know pujols was part of that too but I, I get so tired of hearing people talk about trading Trout and making him the face of the failure or that the Angels failed him when it's it's already Marino and company who failed him. And I yeah. know that there's plenty of blame to go around. I know that you can point fingers at different people. You can look at Perry Manassian and say, well, his first two off seasons as general manager weren't that great when you bring right. in Jose Quintana and then, you know, stuff like that for the 2021 season and Alex Claudio, like just not great moves. Uh, at the same time, I think last year was a much better off season because they made improvements. And now we're seeing this stall that has caused the angels to be called the least improved team because they haven't done anything. Yeah. And you look at these top 10 guys and you know, they've added pieces and they've subtracted pieces. Mike, the angels are number one here in my opinion, because of the fact that they haven't done anything to fill the Otani sized hole in this team. Right. And not that anybody could ever measure up to that, but you still need a nice bat to make up for the 40 plus home runs you might be missing out on. Now you and I are hopeful that somebody can step up like a Logan Ohapi or something who, you know, was on a tear in terms of home runs, but that could change. And yeah. you don't know what you're going to get from yeah. a young guy like that. So all of that to say, I think what makes the Angels the least improved here is the fact that that they haven't done anything, but it is refreshing that they made already the face of this failure because the narrative has always been the same. It's get Trout off this team. No, get Artie away from this team. Right. I, I, I said more of this with Artie's face all over it, please, uh, when this graphic came out from Super Halo Bros because I want to see more Artie Marino uh, attached to the failure and then uh, elusive angel 27 on twitter said like this and i'm gonna hold it up there so uh that, <laughs> if you can see on the video yes. side there's yes. more arty faces uh, tons of arty faces side. um he took that very literally so thank you elusive angel that was fantastic uh but again mike i'm so pleased to see this and for bleacher report to pick up on the fact that this failure belongs to Artie Marino and company, I think is a huge step in the right direction. What do you say? Yeah, I agree. And and I think the thing that really intrigued me was when Artie, when Artie said that he had heard some of the rumblings and some of the negativity, right, uh, about him. And, well, that, and that, was kind of, that was reported by people around him rather yeah, than, than him yeah. outright. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I wonder, like, First, how much of that is true? You know, how sure. much of it is he aware of? And second, if if he's not aware of it in that time and it was just reports, I, I have to think that he's aware of it now. I have to think that he is at least alert to the fact that, man, this team has now lost a once in a generational player mm -hmm. and has not done anything since and is not looking like they're going to be super competitive. I think that there's arguments for them being competitive, but it looks like they're not going to be super, super competitive. Like this, this is one of those things that I think is a, a, a dial turn when it comes to major league baseball and the national mm. media that could get the ball rolling and move it in the direction of, listen, Artie, you you've done a good job with this team in making money. And there was a season, there was a time where you did a good job in allowing this team to be successful, mm -hmm. but it's now time to move on, hand the keys to somebody else, or it's now time to sell this team mm -hmm. and give it to an owner that can help grow this. And if I'm Rob Manfred, I'm looking at this situation and I'm not falling in love with Artie just simply because the Angels are making money and they're not the A's or they're not tanking, right? I'm I'm looking at this situation going, if I had somebody like a Joe Lackib or or somebody along those lines that was really intrigued by this by this Angels team, I would want to move in that direction. And obviously, he is there to ultimately represent the owners. Yeah. And so he's not going to push too hard if he pushes at all. But I do think that there has to be some sort of conversation or some sort of discussion about 
where things are at currently with the Angels. And I think the Angels aren't the only team that needs to have those discussions, but where things are at with the Angels currently. And perhaps there is a move that needs to be made or there is an adjustment that needs to be made because it's not like this team is struggling and suffering with attendance. It's not like this team is struggling and suffering with resource. They're in Southern California. And yes, they're the younger brother, younger sibling of the Dodgers. The Dodgers have a ton of money, but they're in the middle of Orange County and Orange County is not without resource. And, Mm -hmm. and there are fans that even in the Inland Empire, like me, that go out to Angel Stadium to watch these games. And so there's such a reach and uh, forgive me, I'm being repetitive here, but you and I have said often, there are people that probably see this team and go, oh man, just let me, let me sink my teeth into that. Mm-hmm. Let me just put my fingerprints all over that. So I think that this is a really good move in the right direction. If Artie is acknowledging or at least aware that fingers are now pointing in his direction and yeah. moving past Manassian and moving past DePoto and moving ba- past Epler and, and going, you know what? It's you, dude. This is why we're in this situation because it's not just about spending or lack of spending. It has to do with a lot of things that we've covered on this show. It has to do with the issues that they've had in the organization, the issues that they've had with the minor leagues. It has to do with development. It has to do with all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And any pinching, all of those things has gotten this team to where they're at right now in 2024. The, the problem with your Rob Manfred point is the fact that Artie is the template for the kind of owner that Rob Manfred wants in Major League Baseball. A guy who can yield a profit every single year by pinching pennies and cutting resource to where it needs to be going. And and that's exactly the kind of person that Rob Manfred wants in charge of a team. And we've Mm. seen it when when there was a vote to, I think it was, uh, was it the pay raise for minor leaguers? Like when they were working out the CBA or maybe it was a pay raise for base salary already voted against one of those things. It, it, it had the, to do. It was the luxury tax. It might've been the luxury tax uh, of, of, Oh, of bringing up the luxury yes. tax. I yeah, think it I was think the luxury that's, tax. yeah. I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. That's exactly right. Um, but case in point right there is any way to save money or do this thing or that thing. Like already is the template for the kind of guy that Rob Manfred wants as an owner of a team. And so we're not going to get any help from MLB. Certainly, especially with, all of the nonsense that's gone on behind the scenes right. with the angels in the front office in terms of, right. you know, elections and land ownership and Tyler Skaggs and all that stuff. Right. Like nobody's intervened, Mike. And it's just absolutely ridiculous that nobody has intervened. Like what, what more do you have to do before somebody says, Hmm, over there, that's not good. <laughs> like, so oh, do you think, do you think, and I'm just now I'm thinking out loud here. Do you think because it's the Angels and it's not the Dodgers, because it's the Angels and not the Yankees, because it's the Angels and not fill in the blank, that it's not a priority because, man, it's the Angels and they're making money and this is great. And and, and even if they're penny pinching, that's great. But if it was like the Dodgers or the Yankees, that there would be more eyeballs to it? I mean, the Dodgers weren't exactly a priority with the Frank McCourt stuff because they weren't anything to be excited about it did go on for a long time yeah Yeah. and so i i mean there might be something to that point but at the end of the day i i just don't think that that is an excuse on behalf of of mlb to not call out the nonsense but i am glad to see bleacher report at least giving a face to the failure in in the form of Artie Marino on this graphic. Thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen every single day and we're just getting started coming up. Why haven't the Angels improved by making these off-season moves? We think that there's one major reason that's holding everything else up and we're going to share that reason with you coming right up. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Fan duel. Listen, the NFL playoffs are rip roaring hot right now. Obviously, Mike and I are excited about our 49ers taking on the Green Bay Packers. My father in law's team, not awkward at all. Um, but you know, <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. But if you want to get in on the playoff action, it's very easy to do. And you can get in on all the action with Fan duel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. So you don't even have to pick the right team. You don't even have to win the bet. You just got to make a $5 bet and get 150 bucks 
and bonus bets to use on more bets. The app is very easy to use because there's so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and much, much more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. Love FanDuel, and I also love Ibotta, who is also sponsoring Locked On Angels today. And Johnny, it's officially soup season. And so if you don't know what soup season is, soup season is, it's cold, it's rainy, you need a fire, you know, soup season, right? (laughs) So I'm ready for soup season, baby. I am absolutely ready. Do you want soup? Or bowl, or, or do you want or bowl? Super Bowl, Boy Meets World <laughs> reference. Uh, hey, make sure that you get all of the ingredients that you need to master your recipe for soup while getting cash back on your purchases with Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. Toys, Johnny. I haven't bought toys in a long time. I'm going <laughs> to buy toys. Uh, the average Ibotta user earns. $145 per year, which is great. That could cover the a cost of an entire shopping trip or maybe help you get that flight that you've been eyeballing or maybe going to the game that you want to go to or that fancy dinner that you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much, but with Ibotta, you just have to add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and then get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, to your PayPal account, or to a gift card, join the over 50 million savers and earn cash back every time you shop over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners of Locked On Angels $5 just for trying Ibotta by using this code Locked On MLB when you register. So go to the App Store, Google Play Store, download the free Ibotta app, start earning cash back, and use our code Locked On MLB, and you'll get an extra $5. You're welcome. That's Ibotta, I B O T T A, in the Google Play or App Store, and use our code Locked On MLB. Thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen every single day. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day. Hey, everydayers, Lockdown has launched the very first national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Head on over to Lockdown Sports today to get all the top stories in sports of the day and coverage 24-7 from the local experts of Lockdown plus the national shows. Hit, head on over there on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and be part of the first ever 24-7 national sports streaming channel. So, Johnny, why haven't the Angels made any major moves this offseason? Why did they finish first in the least improved team? A lot of (laughs) fans are wondering that. And honestly, I'm wondering that. You're wondering that because they should have about $70 million to spend before they hit that luxury tax threshold. And so there's some there's resource there. But as of today, they haven't spent too much on free agents and they've settled some arbitration cases with a few players like Renjifo and Sandoval. So, Johnny, what's up? What's happening Let's give our everydayers the reason. Take it away. It's, it's ridiculous. And, and so I'm sure a lot of people have heard about Bally Sports and Diamond Sports and kind of the nonsense going around. But let me just make it very clear. Basically, the, the people who own Bally Sports Networks that the Angels are on, the Twins are on, the Rangers are on, they are flat out broke, Mike. Yep. They're $8 billion in debt. Yep. And so Friday... There is a bankruptcy court hearing regarding the Diamond Sports slash Bally uh, Regional Sports Networks. And MLB, they have that scheduled mm-hmm. on Friday. So we're going to have more information come Friday, which is good. But here's here's what's going to go down. The hope is that teams and the MLB will get clarity about where Bally stands financially. And if it's going to have to relinquish their rights to broadcast the teams due to their financial hardship. Now, there is a question of whether or not they might come to an agreement just for this year mm-hmm. and MLB will tell Bally's, "Hey, you know what? You pay this much to the team and you can continue to broadcast." It might not be as much as the team would have gotten because right. they certainly owe a lot of money like the Angels get 150 million dollars a year from Bally's so that they can broadcast Angel games on their network. Right. Remember Diamond Sports bought Fox sports from, from uh, from Fox and, and then who was eventually bought by Disney. But uh, so they, they, they took on this asset and it was not a very good idea. Right now. Here's the interesting part, Mike. Um, Not only does the angels broadcasting situation hang in limbo, but the other 11 teams that Bally's owns 
as well. Amazon wanted to come in and help Bally out and rescue them by purchasing them and offering to invest $150 million in the company to take over the streaming rights to the broadcast for yeah. each of the teams that they carry. But Rob Manfred turned <laughs> it down because Amazon wanted a streaming deal for more than one year. Why is that a bad thing? Well, I think I think Manfred wants MLB to get back those rights through the bankruptcy so that MLB oh. can be the ones to sell them. To, to black Amazon. out the games? Oh, to sell them to Amazon. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, of course. Actually, no. MLB is okay with the blackouts. It's it's the regional sports network, yeah. like Bally's, who yeah. caused the blackouts. Mike, the irony here is, is that they don't even have the digital streaming rights to the Angels. So you know the Bally Sports app? They're always like, you can watch stuff on here, Bally Sports yeah. Plus or whatever. So you, if you have a login for a cable network, you can log in and watch Angels on the app. But if you want the Bally Sports Plus where you're just paying for Bally's, like 15 bucks a month or whatever it is, you can't watch the Angels. You can't watch the game. Yeah. They don't have the digital rights yeah. to the Angels. And so <laughs> it's just a whole hogwash mess, yep. Mike. And yep. so I think all of that, you know, here you go. Here's the here's <laughs> here's, here's, here's the chaos. Yeah, here's the chaos. Is that what's behind the fact that? with all this money on hold and they're kind of waiting until Friday to see how this is all going to shake out. Is that one of the major reasons why the halos and even guys like Texas and the twins yeah. have not made all the moves that their fans would like to see? Yeah. The answer is yeah, I think so. <laughs> because, because I think when you look at the numbers, you know, and you mentioned it, Bally's pays the angels 150 million a year it was a 20 year three billion dollar deal mm -hmm. that fox sports signed with the angels in 2011 so it's up in 20 uh 20 what 20 years 2011 let me add this up 31 thank you yeah. uh 20 who makes who who created this deal at fox sports yeah and so, yeah 20 years from now cable's gonna be thriving like right. the reason they're in this situation is because cable's completely fallen off and streaming has taken over. Right. I mean, I don't I can't think of an a medium of television or movies or anything that's lasted 20 years. No. Well, and that's the, that's what happened with just on the side note. That's what happened with Blockbuster when they had yeah. all of the Netflix stuff that was happening They're like, "No, nah, I I still I think people are going to want to come and get a VHS and come and get a DVD, <laughs> right? And what happened the laser there, disc? right? <laughs> Absolutely. And so that's that's why I'm convinced one of it's not the only sure but one of the reasons why the angels haven't done anything because their 150 million dollars is is not guaranteed to be there mm -hmm. and if Artie's pinching pennies and john carpino is pinching pennies you know that they're not going to fill that gap of 70 million dollars until the luxury tax if they can't guarantee that they can double their their resources with this 150 million dollars mm -hmm. so pay attention to this every day because what happens on Friday will give some great clarity to what the Angels could potentially do, mm -hmm. but ultimately what the Angels would potentially do. Right, Johnny? Yeah. Mike, you know, I did that quick hit last week talking about, you know, kind of the writing on the wall with Artie Marino and maybe possibly selling the team. And there was a good comment that came up and mentioned this Valley Sports mess. Yeah. And to me, it's either going to get sorted out next year because hopefully they'll come to an agreement and we'll get the broadcast that we deserve as fans for at least through the end of the season. But then there's going to have to be a new TV deal right. negotiated somewhere, somehow, right. some way, whether that's with MLB or not, maybe it's another, you know, uh, another bozo company who comes along and makes a, a deal that they can't pay up on. Yeah. But all that to say, does already want to go through that again? Does Artie Marino and company want to negotiate another television deal? I'm not so sure, Mike. I'm not so sure that they would want to stick around for that. Well, the TV right deal is crazy. And we also know that the realities of the world can be a bit crazy, which is why you need Jace Medical's help. And they're sponsoring today's episode. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin and it's happening right in the middle of the cold and flu season it's been one of the worst in decades but here's the good news 
that doesn't have to be a worry for you when you get yourself a Jace case. A Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that treat a long list of bacterial illnesses. It includes UTIs, respiratory and sinus infections, skin infections, and a whole lot more. You can visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician's encounter. It's going to be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed from a licensed pharmacy. And it's going to take place at a fraction of the regular cost. So it's never been more than the right time right now to be prepared for today and the craziness of what's happening today. So go to jacemedical.com, use our promo code locked on. You can get $20 off your order. That's J A S E medical.com. Mike, having said all this, everything we've discussed, <laughs> your deep breath got me. <laughs> uh, like that's just that's just how like every day is just just Mike, you and me right now. Let's just. <gasps> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the last ten years. That's the last like few seasons. That includes that's the COVID this, season, this off that's, season. That this sucks. Off like, season, right? <laughs> yeah, all the injuries. Like, man, we we need some help. <laughs> Let's just say, for example, that the Angels are going to get their answer, as well as the other eleven teams that have connections with Bally Sports. They're going to get their answer on how much Bally owes them for the broadcast rights for this season. Again, I think it's only going to be until the end of 2024 and then that's going to be it. Um, and the, it might come at a discount so that they can continue to do this. We're going to hear a lot of stuff. I think over the next season about what MLB plans to do and who they plan to sell to. Why not Amazon? Get yourself yeah. a prime yeah. membership and get free shipping and then watch the angels. I'm all right, right with that. I'm down. Uh, but here's the thing. If things get settled and we find out how much Bally is going to have to pay the team, do you think, that the Halos, after having received their money, will make a big splash on the free agent market. John, that's a that's a uh, a difficult question for me to answer. Here's why. <laughs> um, I want I want to say my, I'm nervous about it because Artie is always the "let's go get that guy" type of guy, right? But Perry Manassian has proven to be able to manage the lion <laughs> that is Artie Moreno or the bear that is Artie Moreno, right? And and I I would see what I would see is this. Two things. One, if this gets settled and some resource comes in, and two, arbitration and those deals are 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 getting locked up. I could see Perry making some significant signings, but not like Blake Snell. But maybe like a couple of bullpen pieces. Yes. And yes. Uh, another starter for the rotation. Okay. And perhaps making a couple of trades because now that arbitration is settled or now that they've gotten those details then he can trade away those players without the question of how much are they going to make and those types of things. And if he's going to try to save some money, he can send some people away to get some pieces back. And Taylor Ward and Jose Suarez were a part on their arbitration. So yeah. they still have to work. <laughs> Jose Suarez. <laughs> he wants more money than the Angels I, yeah. want to give him. I thought that was funny too. Bro, you, yeah. you were out for four months with a shoulder injury. Come on. Right. Right. Um, Taylor Ward. Yeah. I could see them meeting yes. in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Mike, is it too late? To do anything significant? Is it too late to even make those minor moves? I mean, there's a lot of free agent players out there who need to play somewhere. So right. do you think that time is on the Angels' side here as it gets closer to spring training? And guys are like, fine, I'll, I'll go to the Angels. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. I, I look at like what the Angels need desperately and maybe like not maybe they need a starting pitcher and mm -hmm. they need bullpen pieces. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they need to go and 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 break the bank for Blake Snell. And Yariel Rodriguez is still out there for mm. bullpen pieces, right? Like, I, I think that maybe they can get some some B plus players because it's obvious that they're trying to run with some of these young guys, and they're. I don't think that they're trying to put a situ put them in a situation where Sandoval um, doesn't get to pitch or Griffin Canning doesn't get to pitch. Like they're going to be in the rotation. Maybe even Chase Silseth. Like they want to give him that fifth spot so that he can be somebody that can get reps and and, and can grow. So I think that and I'll give Perry some credit here because he's shown to be able to do this. I think that Perry, if this gets settled and they have some extra resource, I think Perry goes and gets a bit more significant pieces that maybe we're like, what is that? That Carlos Estevez move. What is that? Matt Moore. What is that? Right? Yeah. Like, I think that he does more of that than he does make the big splash. And I think that as fans we will be pretty satisfied. I don't think that there's a huge cannonball 
that takes place this off season for the angels. I could be wrong, but I don't think that there is a huge cannonball that takes place. Okay. But what is the Artie Marino, Josh Hamilton, Anthony Rendon, uh, anger signing. If that does take place, I think it's Blake Snell and Matt Chapman. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Not, not Cody Bellinger. Uh, yeah, he's still out there, isn't he? Um, look, I'll be honest. I'd like Cody Bellinger. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that if they signed him for, you know, whatever he wants, seven to 10 years, whatever it's going to be. Yeah. Put him around the young guys that are on this team. Yeah. Like maybe you got a stew going, you so know if what I'm saying? If, it, if it's <laughs> Snell or Bellinger and they have to pick, who do you think it is? Well, <laughs> the angry Artie signing to me is Snell, but okay. also he's not signed any starting pitchers to a long-term commitment since right. DJ Wilson. And it was, right. it was what, seven or eight years at 200 million, I think was the rumor for Snell. Yeah. Oh, I saw, I, yeah, I saw like at least 30 million a year somewhere yeah. out there. So, yeah. Um, so Bellinger feels like that to me. Chapman, I don't think Chapman in Artie's eyes is a big I would enough. prioritize Bellinger over Chapman. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, if, you're it right. Was an, if it was an Artie move, I think it would be Bellinger. Look, I'm with you. I think the Angels have some some spots to fill out, especially in that bullpen. Um, and, you know, Reed Detmers is on foul territory talking about how difficult Great, it was to move through the system so quickly. And there are other guys moving through it even faster than he did. So maybe it would be to Chase Silseth's benefit to be in double A, be in triple A, get the reps that he needs and work on things because maybe that move is really difficult. And so they could benefit from another starter. All that to say, yes, there is a wise way to go about this. And there's the arty way to go about this. If the arty way ends up being Bellinger, I won't be mad. I'll laugh because it was certainly an arty move. Yeah. But I think in, in, in to your point, I think the more wise move, uh, which we can credit Perry Minossian with after last off season is get the bullpen pieces, mm -hmm. get that one starter su supplement what you already have and, and really round out this team. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Every day is remember that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, hit subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram, whether you're watching or listening today, come on over to YouTube, find today's show, get in the comments because it's the best way to get at Mike and I. We do our best to respond to uh, every single comment on there, and uh, we really appreciate you doing that. Again, if you're watching or listening, follow the episode description. There's a link in there. You can vote for us for Best Baseball Podcast. That would really mean a lot to us. Mike, what do we have on deck for Friday's show. You mentioned our buddies at Foul Territory. They're making our job really easy. They're interviewing all of our angel players and managers. <laughs> Hook it up, Scott Braun. Send them Absolutely. our way. Send, Send them our way. But we get to summarize some of those some of those uh, interviews and highlight what was talked about. So they interviewed Ron Washington this week. Yeah. And we're going to share what was really good and what was really interesting about what Ron Washington said about this team. And we'll share all of that with you on Friday on Locked on Angels. Got to have some angel fan perspective on what he had to say, right? And right. so I think that would be a, a good idea to come back on Friday and join us for that. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here, everybody, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Hook us up, Scott Braun. Come on, come on. Scott. We'll, we'll call your cousin Ryan, and we'll tell him to hook us up. <laughs> oh, or the Brawny guy. They're not related.